Good evening, everybody. Welcome to tonight's regular council meeting. We'll begin with question period. If there's any questions, please come to the microphone. Okay, so let's move to the adoption of the agenda. Councilor Goldworks. Yes. Mr. Mayor, I have uh, two items, three items I'd like to add to the agenda, please. Okay, go ahead. Item 8.3, which is the transfer of funds to finance expenses for the extras associated to the forensic accounting investigation contract regarding the expenses of the former Director General, not covered by the operational budget. The second item is 9.1, which is in, in, in conjunction with that, is the resolution for granting the extras for the forensic accounting investigation contract regarding the expenses of the former Director General. So those two are hand in hand. And the last item I'd like to add is 10.4, a resolution of hiring David uh, Vidakovic as a permanent public security officer. And then I have 10.5, off, uh, hiring offer uh, Mr. Lai Kaiba as a permanent public security officer. And 10.6, which is uh, hiring of Mr. Brandon Littlejohn as a permanent public security officer. Okay, thank, thank you, Councilor Goldwax. Do I have someone to second that? Yeah. Schaefer, okay. So it is proposed by Councilor Goldwax, seconded by Councilor Schaefer, and resolved that the modified agenda of the regular council meetings hereby adopted as presented. <laughs> Anyone opposed? Adopted. 4.0. Adoption of the minutes of the regular council meeting held on October 8th, 2024. It is proposed by Councilor Budding, seconded by Councilor Schaefer, resolved that the minutes of the regular council meeting held on October 8th, 2024, hereby approved as submitted. Anyone opposed? Adopted. 5.1. Tabling of the minutes of the regular PAC meeting held on October 15, 2024. Each member of the council have received a copy of the town clerk tables of the minutes of the regular planning advisory committee meeting held on October 15, 2024. The council takes note of the table of the said minutes by the town clerk. 5.2. Request to authorize the construction of a new, new detached single family home located at 102 Stratford, lot number 2088986, zone RE1. Zoning by number 101 SPIP by number 775. Uh, Councilor Bunding, yeah. um, was this the, the, the project? Yeah, that you and I spoke about, yeah. Okay, thank you. It is proposed by Councilor Bunding. Bunding, second by Councilor Schaefer, and resolved that the request to authorize the construction of a new detached single family home located at 102 Stratford and submitted to the Planning and Advisory Committee meeting held on October 15, 2024, is approved as recommended no. by the... Uh, deferred, deferred. Deferred. Yes. deferred. 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 It's the other item that's being approved. It's the other one. It's the next Sorry, one. It's, okay. it's one that you and I spoke about earlier in the book. Oh, okay. <laughs> it is deferred as recommended by the PAC. The proposed project meets the prescribed standards of the zoning bylaw number 001 and partially meets the prescribed standards of the site planning and architecture integration program bylaw number 775. Anyone opposed? Deferred. 5.3. Request to authorize two minor exemptions to zoning by number 1001 for a detached single family home located at 5689 Queen Mary, lot number 1039434, one zoning by number 1001, by lot concerning minor exemptions number 1013. Were there any interventions? So the members of council have reviewed the request for two minor exemptions to zoning by number 1001 to section 116, paragraph 4, to allow one semi circular driveway on the front yard on Queen Mary, to section 116, paragraph 5, to allow two vehicular access on the front yard on Queen Mary instead of one vehicular access per land site. So the Planning Advisory Committee meeting, committee on its meeting held on October 2024 recommended to approve the request for two minor exemptions to zoning by 1001. It is proposed by Councilor Budding, seconded by Councilor Schaefer, resolved that the request for two minor exemptions to zoning by 1001 for the property located at 569 Queen Mary, lot number 2094 zone RA1 is approved. Anyone opposed? No. Adopted. 5.4. Request to authorize an addition of the rear yard for a detached single family home located at 77 Finch and number 28751, zone R1, zone A, bylaw number 2, SPIP bylaw number 775. It is proposed by Council. Bunding. Bunding, seconded by Council. Schaefer, result of the request to authorize an addition of the rear yard for a detached single family home located at 77 Finch, submitted to the Planning and Advisory Committee meeting on October 15, 2024, is approved as recommended by the PAC. Proposed project meets the prescribed standards of the zoning bylaw number 001 and meets the prescribed standards of the site planning and architecture integration program bylaw number 775. Anyone opposed? Adopted. 5.5. Request to authorize facade modifications for a detached single family home located at 67 Glenmore, 208901, zone RA2, zoning by 001, SPIP, PIP, bylaw number 775. Councilor Bunning, is this yes. the one? Okay. It is proposed by Councilor Bunning, seconded by Councilor. Schaefer, resolved that the request to authorize for some modification for a detached single family home located at 67 Glenmore, submitted to the Planning committee, planning Advisory Committee meeting on October 15, 2024, is approved as recommended by the PAC. The proposed project meets the prescribed standards of the zoning bylaw number 1001 and partially meets the prescribed standards of the site planning and architectural integration program bylaw number 705. Anyone opposed? 
It's adopted. 6.1. Twelfth renewal of the intermunicipal agreement for the dumping of snow between the town of Hampton and the city of Cotonou. Considering that council received a copy of the proposed twelfth renewal of the intermunicipal agreement for the dumping of snow. Since the end of the term of the agreement of 2009 with an effective date of October 22, 2024 between the City of Cortina and the Town of Hampstead, it is proposed by Councillor Goldwax. <coughs> Goldwax, seconded by Councillor Schaefer, and resolved the Director General, or in case of his absence, the Town Clerk or their replacements, are authorized to sign the 12th renewal of the Intermunicipal Agreement for the Dumping of Snow with an effective date of October 22, 2024, by which the City of Cortina and the Town of Hampstead used the Cortina and Snow Dump located at the intersection of Shemek Hilder and Avenue Marchigal during the period of November 1, 2024 and March 31, 2025. Anyone opposed? Adopted. 6.2. Resolution of support to the City of Beaconsfield for the maintenance of water fluoridation by the Bill de Montreal. Whereas the drinking water consumed by the population of Beaconsfield is produced at the Point Clair filtration plant. Whereas the drinking water produced by the Point Clair and Dorval filtration plants has been fluoridated for many decades, thereby contributing to the oral health of the population. Whereas the public health benefits of fluoridating the drinking water are widely recognized and supported by scientific studies. Whereas the Regional Public Health Authority recommends water fluoridation as a measure to improve dental health and reduce social inequalities in health. Whereas the City of Montreal is considering ending the fluoridation of drinking water by the end of 2024, without prior public consultation or collaboration with the city served by the Point Clair and Dorval plants. Whereas the City of Beaconsfield has never expressed a desire to end the fluoridation of its drinking water, it is proposed by Councillor Goldwax. Goldwax, second by Councillor. Ettery, and resolved to support the City of Beaconsfield and its request to the City of Montreal to maintain the fluoridation of drinking water for the citizens of Beaconsfield and other served cities. To request that the Ville de Montréal reconsider its decision to end water fluoridation in the interest of public health and safety of the citizens of the, of the served cities, to forward this resolution to Valerie Plant and other interested parties. <laughs> Anyone opposed? Adopted. 7.1. Notice of motion of Valerie Mark 1040 concerning tax rates for the year 2025. Notice of motion was given by Councillor. Ettery, that at a subsequent meeting of the Town Council by Lamar 1040, the decree and opposing the tax rates to cover the town's expenses for the year 2025 will be submitted for adoption. All council members are received a copy of draft by Lamar 1040 and a motion to dispense with the reading of the said bylaw was made. 7.2. Tabling of draft by Lamar 1040 concerning tax rates for the year 2025. Each member of the council have received a copy and declaring to have read at the town clerk tables of draft by Lamar 1040, the decree and opposing the tax rates to cover the town's expenses for the year 2025. Council takes note of the tabling of the said draft by Lamar by the town clerk. 7.3. Notice of motion of bylaw number 1010-26 modifying the tariff bylaw number 1010. Notice of motion was given by Councillor Ettery that at a subsequent meeting of the Town Council bylaw number 1010-26 modifying the tariff bylaw number 1010 will be submitted for adoption. All council members are received a copy of draft bylaw number 1010-26 and the motion dispensed with the reading of the bylaw was made. 7.4. Tabling of draft bylaw number 1010-26 modifying the tariff bylaw number 1010. Each member of the council has received a copy of the current read at the town clerk table's draft by number 1010-26 modified the tariff by number 1010. Council takes note of the table and the set draft by by the town clerk. 7.5. Adoption of number 757-5 modified by number 757-4 concerning the pension plan for the employees of the town of Hampstead. Whereas the members of council have received a copy of number 757-5 modified by number 757-4 concerning the pension plan for the employees of the town of Hampstead and the current read it. It is proposed by council. Ettery. Second by council. Goldwax. Goldwax, in result to approve bylaw number 757-5, modified bylaw number 757-4, concerning the pension plan for the employees of the town of Hampstead. Anyone opposed? Adopted. <coughs> 7.6. Adoption of bylaw number 741-10, modified bylaw number 741-9, respecting the delegation of powers to officers, employees, to authorize spending of money and make contracts in the name of the municipality. Whereas the members of council received a copy of bylaw number 741-10, modified bylaw number 741-9, respecting the delegation of powers to officers, and employees, to authorize spending money and make contracts in the name of the municipality, and clearly read it. It is proposed by council. Ettery. Ettery, second by council. Schaefer, resolved to approve bylaw number 741-10, modify bylaw number 741-9, respect the delegation of powers to officers and employees to authorize the spending of money and to make contracts in the municipality. Anyone opposed? Adopted. 7.7. Adoption of bylaw number 1019-1, modify bylaw number 1019, respecting the use of tobacco products and other substances in the territory of the town of Hampstead. Whereas the members of council have received a copy of bylaw number 1019-1, modify bylaw number 1019, respecting the use of tobacco products and other substances in the territory of the town of Hampstead, and have read it. It is proposed by council. Ettery, second by Councillor. Second by Councillor Budding. Resolved to approve by number 1019 1019-1, modifying by number 1019, respecting the use of tobacco products and other substances in the territory of the town of Hampstead. Anyone opposed? Adopted. 7.8. Adoption of by number 1009-8, modifying by number 1009, concerning the demolition of movables. Whereas the members of Council have received a copy of by number 1009-8, modifying by number 1009, concerning the demolition of movables, and cleared over Reddit. It is proposed by Council. Bunding, seconded by Council. Schaefer, result to approve by number 1009-8, modified by number 1009, concerning the demolition of removals. Anyone opposed? Adopted. 
approval of the disbursement for the month of September 2024. Considering that council reviewed the list of payments for the month of September 2024, it is proposed by council. Ettery. Second by council. Schaefer. Schaefer. Resolved that the disbursement for the period from September 1st, 2024 to December 30, 2024, in total amount of $1,635,892.93 are hereby approved. Anyone opposed? Adopted. 8.2. Tabling of the comparative statement of revenues and expenditures for fiscal year 2024. According to section 105.4 of the Cities and Towns Act, the Town Treasurer hereby deposit the following. Statement of revenues and expenditures as of September 30th for fiscal year 2024 compared to the same period for the fiscal year 2023. Statement of projected revenues and expenditures for the fiscal year 2024 at the time of the statement's preparation compared with those provided for in the budget for the year 2024. 8.3. Transfer of funds to finance expenses for the extras associated with the forensic accounting investigation contract regarding the expenses of the former director general not covered by the 2024 operational budget. It is proposed by Council. Ettery. Ettery, second by Council. Goldwax. Goldwax. Resolved that Town Council approves the transfer of 20000 from GL number 55-991-00-00 and appropriate is replaced. The GL number 02-190-00-99 contingency to finance expenses for the extras associated with the forensic accounting investigation contract regarding the expenses of the former director general. Anyone opposed? Adopted. 9.1. Granting extra for forensic accounting investigation contract regarding the expenses of the former Director General. Considering that the firm Circo 2969-9899 Quebec and was retained to carry out a forensic accounting investigation concerning the expenses of the former City Director General of the Town. Considering that a contract worth $25,000 was already approved for this investigation. Considering that the firm Circo 2969-9899 Quebec Inc. will incur additional amounts estimated at $29,000 to finalize this investigation mandate. It is proposed by Council. Battery. Battery, second by Council. Budding. Budding. Resolved to authorize the additional amounts of 20000 necessary to finalize the forensic accounting investigation concerning the expense of the former Director General of the Town to be incurred by Circo 2969-9899 Quebec Inc. Anyone opposed? Adopted. 10.1. Hiring approval of Mr. Patrice Delisle as a geomatics technician. So that the Town of Hampstead requires the hiring of permanent geomatics technician in salary grade 11. So that the General Director of the Information Security Director recommend the hiring of Mr. Patrice Delisle to fill such position. Stated in that resolution, the 2006 S 344 delegates joined the General Director and the Human Resources Director with the authority to hire non-regular officers and employees for a term of not more than 520 hours. Stated that Mr. Patrice Delisle has begun his assignment on October 1st, 21st, 2024. It is proposed by Council. Ettery. Ettery, second by Council. Budding. Budding. Resolved to approve the hiring of Mr. Patrice Delisle as a permanent geomatics technician subject to the usual conditions in accordance with the provisions of the collective agreements in Keep Local 429 and Town of Hampstead. With the Treasurer's Certificate number 24 63 dated October 17, 2024, tested the available funds required to cover this expense. Anyone opposed? Adopted. 10.2. Creation of a new function and a new position of Human Resources Council. <coughs> it is proposed by Council. Budding. Budding. Second by Council. Ettery and resolved to create a new management function of Human Resources Council salary level 6 and to fill one position in the newly created function. I hire Mrs. Gloria Cabea as Human Resources Controller. The Treasurer took number 24 64 dated October 17, 2024, tested the ability funds required to cover this expense. Anyone opposed? Adopted. 10.3. Approval of the letter of agreement signed on October 17, 2024, with the Syndicate de Fonctionnaires Municipales du Montréal. With regards to the changes of the schedules for the Public Security Department and the creation of three permanent positions of Public Security Agents, <coughs> Considering that the collective agreement with the Syndicat de Fonction of Municipal de Montréal will expire on December 31st, 2025. Considering that the Town of Hampstead operations require the addition of new work schedules for the Public Security Department. It is proposed by Council. Goldwax. Goldwax, second by Council. Schaefer resolved to approve the letter of agreement signed October 17, 2024 with the Syndicat de Fonction of Municipal de Montréal. To create three permanent positions of public security agents to authorize Human Resources Director to execute conditions provided for in the said letter of agreement. Anyone opposed? Adopted. 10.4. Hiring of Mr. David Vidakovic as a permanent public security officer. Considering that one permanent public security officer position is <coughs> salary grade 8 is present vacant. <coughs> Considering that the Director of Information Security and the Director General recommended the hiring of Mr. David Vidakovic to fill such position. He is proposed by Councillor Goldwax. Goldwax, second by Councillor Schaefer. Resolved to hire Mr. David Vidakovic as a permanent public security officer subject to the conditions and accordance with the provisions of the collective agreements in Cube Local 1400 Town of that the Treasurer took number 24 65 dated November 1st, 2024, test the ability of the funds required to cover this expense. Anyone opposed? No. Nope. Adopted. 10.5. Hiring of Mr. Le Cabat as a permanent public security officer. Considering that one permanent public security officer position salary grade 8 is presently vacant. Considering the Director of Information Security and Director General are recommending the hiring of Mr. Le Cabat to fill such position. It is proposed by Councillor Goldwax. Goldwax, second by Councillor 
Schaefer, resolved to hire Mr. Blake Cobb as a permanent public security officer. Subject to user conditions, the courts, the provisions of the collective agreement to Cube Local 49, the town of Hampstead. To the Treasurer, number 24 66 state of November 1st, 2024, attest to the ability of funds required to cover this expense. They went opposed. Adopted. 10.6, hiring of Mr. Brandon Littlejohn as permanent public security officer. So in that one permanent public security officer position, side grade 8 expressly vacant. So in the Director of Information Security and the Director of General recommend the hiring of Mr. Brandon Littlejohn to fill such position. This is proposed by Councilor Goldwax. Goldwax, seconded by Councilor Schaefer, resolved to hire Mr. Brandon Littlejohn as permanent public security officer, so the conditions according to the provisions of the collective agreement. Continue Cube Local 429 in the town of Hampstead. The Treasurer certificate number 24 67, dated November 1st, 2024, attests the availability of funds required to cover this expense. No one opposed. Adopted. 12.1. Authorization to proceed with the contract renewal for the maintenance and application support with PG Solutions Inc. for 2025. Whereas town proceeded to the purchase of the PG Solutions Inc. applications for 2005. Whereas applications of PG Solutions Inc. are those used for the town's daily operations. Whereas the Director General and the Director of Information Security have affixed their signature to the supplier's offer of services in order to demonstrate their agreement to the award of said contract. It is proposed by Council Goldwax. Goldwax, second by Council. Schaefer resolved that the annual renewal maintenance for contract for 2025 be awarded PG Solutions Inc. for an amount of $45,452 plus taxes. Anyone opposed? Adopted. So, uh, we will now, okay, uh, before we move on to the final question period, second question period, just want to remind everybody that um, although Remembrance Day is next Monday, the Town of Hampstead always. Um, presents a, a very grand Remembrance Day ceremony <clears throat> several days before this year. It will be this coming Thursday, November 7th, uh, starting at, at 11 a.m. 11.30, it's gonna be at Hempstead Park. Um, it's gonna be a, uh, a little bit more grander this year than in previous years, thanks uh, in part to not only our Director General, Joe Nunes, who's former military, but also Sarah Ev, our, uh, our Director of Communications, who uh, really has uh, put an elaborate exhibit um, with regards to veterans, which will be on display here at CSR from November 7th through November 10th. Uh, so I just want to invite everybody, encourage everybody to come on November 7th at 11.30. If for whatever reason you're unable to make it, please come by over the next several days to check out the exhibit. It's going to be quite remarkable. Um, having said that, are there any other comments or any other business by Council? Uh, just one thing I want to acknowledge, I think we have 11 town employees here tonight. So a huge thank you to all of you and uh, everything that you guys do on a day-to-day -day basis. I second that, thank you very much. Uh, okay, so we'll move to the second question period. Any, any questions? Please, step forward. So I, um, I'm here regarding 6201 Coastal Road. Uh, so you ordered me to stop and calling that we've surpassed the 50%, then it's considered a demolition. And I uh, wanted to address and try to explain that uh, you guys have something on the books where demolition, I guess the spirit that you guys have been doing in the past is only exterior walls. So you calculate it in a certain way. But the regulation and the law states in Quebec that a wall is not exterior, it's interior and exterior, unless stipulated, which in Hampstead rules and regulations, it's not. So the way you guys have calculated, you put me over the 50% and stopped my project and want me to do a whole demo request. We're at 48% if you include the interior wall, which is the rule throughout Quebec, unless other, if it's stipulated differently. So I'm here for that before uh, I wanted to try to rectify it in an amicable way. I brought my architect and the builder. So is, 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 is there a specific question? Because it's a question period. Well, the question is, is there a way to remedy and to explain to you how, how it works and if we could try to uh, rectify it in an amicable way? So um, I am not too familiar with regards to the file. Uh, what I can tell you is um, our urban planning department made a decision, not council that made a decision, our urban planning department made a decision based on the information that they have that it was deemed now to be demolition. Having said that, I received a mise en demeure letter from your lawyer or from you, whatever, so I'm not going to get into this now because now it's clearly a legal issue. 
So I'm going to leave it now to to. Uh, no, no, no. I'm, I, I, I hear what you're saying. No, 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 let me finish. But sure. So because of that, I'm not going to comment. No one in our council is going to comment on this now. So now sure. it's it's you you made this a legal issue, and, and now it's going to be a legal issue. So I'll have the architect explain the rules and laws. And then if it'll continue to be a legal issue, then I will continue and I will get an injunction in court. I was trying to avoid that. And then there'll be a fee of over $3,000 a day of back, uh, back losses or whatever. Whatever, whatever, to, whatever it is, it's, it's, the point is, it's not for a discussion now at council. What, it, it's, it's what, what, it, what is my council. right is to have the architect explain to you uh, how it works throughout Quebec and perhaps that not being special. I, 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 that's not the purpose of a council meeting. There, there's a question this period. Is, this is a question no, no, period for me to explain, and I'm, I'm a taxpayer, so I would like to explain how it is, and then afterwards. No, it's not an explanation it. period. It's a question period. If you ask a question, we can choose to answer the question or not. That's that's how it goes. So it's as simple as that. You're saying that I can't. You could ask a question. You did ask a question. We could choose to answer it or not. And I said I'm not going to answer any question because it's now illegal. I'm not mm -hmm. asking you to answer. I just want you to hear. From that's, that, no, that's, that's, not what, that's not what question period is. That it's is. free to ask a question. So if, if you have no further questions, so we're, we're going to that end. it's only for questions and it's, it's not called for question any, period. I understand what it's called. But you're saying it's, I can't voice my opinion other than pose a question. Is that what you're saying? Just so, be, just just, so I'm, I'm, now I'm asking you a question. Yes. Is that what it is? If I have no question, I'm not allowed to speak my mind. Is that what you're saying? That's is exactly, that what you're saying? That's exactly what question period. Uh, so I'm telling you that that's not the case. I've been here very enough times that people voice anything that and any right Be that because, they have for because, any issue. Because we allow it. But in this particular case, it's now a legal issue and we're not going to allow it. Okay. So. Can I, can I ask a question? Is that right? I don't, th I don't think it's the, uh, the, the time for that. Okay, any other questions? Okay, having that, we'll move to adjournment. The agenda hasn't been completed. It is proposed by Councillor. Schaefer, second by Councillor. Funding resolved this council meeting to be adjourned at 8.22 p.m. Thank you very much, everybody, for coming.